Hey, what's happening? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Hero Codes. And yes, I have a blank slate. Literally, I kind of wanted to go back to the basics and kind of a web design 101, web development 101, and take you through a solid structure in HTML. You know, there's modern day languages of Angular, React, there's a whole bunch of pieces, but when it comes down to it, everything gets bundled into a static website, which is still HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I thought I'd take this back more for beginners who are just getting into web design slash web development. I want to break it down for a basic HTML website. And then in future videos, I'm going to go into more CSS and more design pieces in the following weeks. So don't forget to subscribe and follow this playlist in the future. And with that, let's get started. All right, welcome back. Once again, my name is Hayden Adams. I've been developing and designing websites for 20 something years. And at the end of the day, the website is still the same, but the structure is what's most important. So let's go ahead and actually write our first bit of code. If you are brand new to coding, then awesome. I am using VS Studio Code. This is actually a Microsoft product, if you can believe it, but it's actually a really, really, really good Microsoft product. Uh, you can use any code editor you want. The great part about code is it literally is just text. Text editors, you can also use a software called Coda for the Mac. There's also Sublime, and I'm running Visual Studio Code. So if we take this from the very beginning of building an HTML page, you have to declare this page as an HTML document. What you have to do is type less than sign, exclamation point, doc type, and VS Studio Code fills it in for me. But what I also can just do is literally old school type it. And come on, if I can type today. No, <laughs> all these fill-ins, try it one more time, less than sign. And notice that it auto fills it for me, but if not, I can type doc type HTML. Now note that this is just a mono tag. There's not a self-closing tag below it. This is more just to declare the HTML page. The browser goes, hey, this is not just a text document, this is an HTML page. Now below this is one of the most important tags that every website has, and that's HTML. The HTML basically says everything inside of these two tags, render it, or as the browser is concerned, what's gonna happen to the website is inside these two tags. So inside of HTML, you're gonna find the head tag. Now the head tag is more the meta information. I describe the head tag as if you were watching a theater, now this is 2020 and we are in the middle of a pandemic, so thereby you probably will not be watching a movie theater, but if you were to imagine 2019 when we used to go to theaters and plays, the head area is what you do not see on stage. It's where the actors are changing. It's where the lighting control board is. Everything not on stage is the head. And one of the most important aspects inside the head is the title. So we'll say this is a title. Now, where does the title show up? If we were to open up Chrome, and I guess I closed it, let me go back. I thought I had this down, but apparently I must have closed a window. So let's go to demo and in here. Notice how there's nothing inside of this screen. There's just an empty blank canvas. And notice how this is a title shows up above this area. This is where your bulk of design and content, of course, are gonna go. But the metadata says this is a title up here whereby the head and title. Also note that I'm indenting as much as possible. This is what's called nesting tags. If you think of a Russian nesting doll where there's a doll inside of a doll inside of a doll, that's why you actually want to tab in. It's easy to see if you make a mistake and all of a sudden there's an open tag but not a closed tag below. So the important part to note is that there's an HTML, a head area and a title. And the title sits outside the main content area of your website. After the head, you're gonna have a body. I'm gonna type less than sign body, 
greater than symbol, I hit the return key in Visual Studio Code, also in dense inside this information of the word body. So if I say this is where all of your content will live. So now if I save this, come back to my browser, hit Command R to refresh, notice now this is where all of your content will live. That's pretty awesome. So you've now built a website. If you've never done a website before, in how many minutes that I just spent building this document, this is a living, breathing website. That's pretty awesome. But there's more to do down below inside the body. So if you think about a structure of a website, there's really three key areas that I wanna talk about here. I'm all, well, let's just put it down below. I'm gonna make comments. Now comments also in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever language you are writing in is very, very important. The great part about most editors is that if you hit command slash, it'll put a comment in whatever language you're working in. So in this case, HTML is defined by less than sign, exclamation point, dash, dash. And I'm gonna say, in this case, there is a header slash nav area. And we'll talk about these three areas. There's also the main area. And then there's a, nope, I thought I did it, a footer. So if you think about a website, there's three areas to focus on. The first is your header slash nav. That of course is the navigation of your website. It stays solid, it doesn't move, it rarely changes. Think of the header nav as it's built in concrete. The next section of your website is where all of your content is really gonna live. And that is in the main section. And we'll get into these tags in one second. The last is the footer. The footer is designed to tell the user, stop. This is as far down as you can possibly go. There is nothing below the footer. Footers range from simply having a copyright to saying XYZ company, to having a whole new site map, to having your newsletter link. There are so many things that can go inside the footer that the sky is with a limit. But really the footer is designed to tell the user, stop, don't go any further because you can't. Now these three are actually defined by HTML tags. So what you'll find is either there's going to be a header where you can say header nav or what I usually do is I don't use the header as much because that can actually go down inside the main to identify the header element. What I usually do is I usually just use the word nav. And so what I'll do is I will say nav, there we go. And I'll say this is where my navigation goes. And we'll make a comment. And for just the sake of showing in the browser, we'll say navigation goes here. And we'll save. And there we go, navigation goes here. So down below the nav, I'm gonna write the word main. Notice how they become blue, because these are actually, I would say approved, but every browser can identify these tags. If I type giraffe, and I didn't spell it right, technically that is a tag. However, it's not really one of the approved tags that the browsers recognize. And I didn't even spell giraffe right, but hey, what the heck. So in the main section, this is where the bulk of your data will go. We'll put a little period in this piece right here and we save it and there we go. And the last section I wanna create is a footer. And I'll say footer, drop it down, this is where your footer would go. And there it is. Notice there's no design elements to these pieces as well. So we have, if we look back, we have our footer. And the cool part about Visual Studio Code and other softwares is I can literally collapse these areas just to make it more visually showing on the screen that there is a nav, a main, and a footer and we'll take out the notes now down here. 
So note that this text is just text. It looks pretty darn boring, but that's okay. That's because HTML is not a design language. It's a markup language, or hypertext markup language. The important part to note is that you create a nav above the main, and then below the main is the footer. This tells the browser all the information of a structure. So when you build a house, you have a front door, you have windows, you have attics. The same thing happens in tags. And a tag is defined as the word or letter. There could be an A tag, for example. So in this case, the HTML is a tag, the head is a tag, the title is a tag, the body is a tag, nav, main, and footer are also tags. When you build your documents, don't forget to open and close. There are a few tags that do not open and close. For example, the horizontal rule is HR slash close. And all the HR, the horizontal rule is, it looks like this, just creates a line, nothing magical about it. Again, I'm not thinking about HTML in terms of design, I'm thinking of HTML in terms of HTML. How is my structure built will then define how my CSS is built going forward. Inside the main, I could also have an H1. So if I type less than sign H1, this is the main title of the website. And yes, it did get bigger because by default, the browsers all have a default design structure attached to the HTML tags. So we'll get in the future, we'll actually design different pieces to this website. But what's important to note is, is that if you think about the H1, this is the granddaddy big title of your website that goes inside of your content. So this is a title is the title, but this website is defined by this is the main title of the website. If this is the most important phrase, then put it in the H1. Now you can have multiple H1s. Google doesn't say you shouldn't, but I've always said that you should have one H1 and multiple H2s. So if we go a little forward on the H1, we'll go towards the H2. You can go down from the H2 and we'll say this is a subtitle to H6. You'll never use an H6. And there it is. So notice how by default the H1 is bigger than the H2 and is definitely bigger than the H6. Now why do I say you'll never use an H6? In traditional code you'd have to go through H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I can't find a Wikipedia article that hits the H6. The H6 is pretty much like a unicorn. It is there because the founding fathers of the web did set six subtitles, or I guess five, including the H1. But in reality, it's not really the proper way to design. So I, what I don't wanna do essentially is I don't wanna say I want small type thereby I should use an H6. No, you should use the H3 because after one and two comes three. So really what I should do is I should say three and now it becomes an H6. You'll never use an H6, but you'll probably use an H3. There, that looks a little better. So once again, the important part is that thinking about not the design in HTML, but thinking of the structure, thinking of the markup language. And this is the basic structure of an HTML document. We have the head at the top, we have the body in between, and we have the HTML pieces down below. In the future, what I'm gonna do is we'll go over more of the paragraphs, we'll go over lists, and we'll go over CSS elements. I wanna take also further into tags and not just tags, but also IDs and classes. But this is a basic start. If you're just learning or you wanna go back and just go, am I building my site the right way? Well, it all starts with a really good fundamental plan in HTML. 
And this is where you can start going forward to build your website dreams. Ready to continue becoming a better web designer through code? Check out more of my videos through my channel, A Designer Who Codes. Thanks so much for watching.